Hello everyone and welcome to Dave's Tech Tips. Today we're going to look at JavaScript Object Notation or JSON. Now before you close the video and run for the hills because you're not a developer, um, hear me out. All right, so most things in IT today use JSON. So whether you use Microsoft Teams or browse a website or use a mobile application, in some shape or form most things use JSON. Power Platform is no exception. So if you're going to use Power Apps, if you're going to be creating Power Apps, it'll definitely be advantageous to you if you understand how JSON works because that's a similar way how, how you structure your data in, in, in Power Apps. So please stick around and watch this video. If you do find it helpful, please like, subscribe and tell your friends. Let's get started. To get started, we're going to open up Visual Studio Code. If you don't have Visual Studio Code, I would highly recommend you download it. And um, it's very useful for intelligent text editing like we're about to do. Um, it's, it's very, very useful. You could also use Notepad++ or other text editors, although Visual Studio Code is just so much better than all of the others that we've seen. So to start off with, you create download Visual Studio Code and then uh, create a new file by hitting Control N or going to File New. And then make sure at the bottom that the language is set to JSON. And now we're good to go. So to create our first object, we're going to create an open and close curly bracket. And then typically you'd have a space between them. And that shows you that in between these two curly brackets, you can now define properties. So you could look at an op as an object as a row in a table or a SharePoint list item. Essentially, this is a record which we can add data into. So inside of the object, you have properties, and this is where you define the various metadata. So that could be columns in a table or um, columns in a, in a SharePoint list. But essentially, we're going to go and specify a first property, and we're going to call this first name. All right, so this might be a person record of some sort. So we're going to have the first name as the first property, and then let's say that this is Mike. All right, so this is the values are specified in combination of key and value. So the key is first name, and the value is Mike. And together, this gives you the property. All right, so there's Mike. We can add, a, and we're going to say this is a normal text string. So we're going to add two quotes next to the value, and that tells it that it is a text string. So to add another property, we need to add a comma behind the previous property, and then it allows you to create another one. So let's do last name. And in this case, this might be Jones. So then we've got a record with two fields in it, or two columns. The one is first name and the other one is last name, and both being text properties. Next data type that we might look at is a number. So if we go and specify age as a property or a key, we can go and say that Mike Jones is 30 years old. And you'll see, because it's a number, we don't have to specify it in two double quotes. So that is 100% sufficient. The system will know what to do with this. That also could have been a decimal. So you can go and say 30.0, or you could make this a negative, which wouldn't make sense in this context, but it, it would allow that because it's a number. And it, it's intelligent enough to understand what number it is that you're working with. All right, so that's a number. Uh, next data type that you might use is a Boolean value. So let's say that there was a married checkbox to say yes or no. Um, so you can go and say in this case, this could be false. So let's say Mike isn't married. And uh, so that's a Boolean value. And again, you don't put those in, in double quotes. And now next data type we're going to look at is a, a null value. Now, Null value is an actual data type, and sometimes it's important to specify a null and not just a blank value. L let me show you what I mean. So let's say that he had a driver's, let's just put that in double quotes, driver's license ID. And let's say he did not have one. 
So you might want to specify null in that property instead of just a blank text value because blank string isn't necessarily null. Um, in certain uh, functions, you might actually want to check whether th this thing has a value and whether it's null or not. So uh, yeah, null is, a, is an actual data type. Next, we're going to be looking at an object. Now, this entire thing is an object, but an object could contain other objects. So you could have a property that contains an object. So let's go and say contact details. And in this case, we're going to have an object. So open and close curly brackets. Hit enter. And now I can go and specify properties directly inside of that object. So in this case, this might be an email address. And this might be mike.jones.gmail.com. And another cont a property inside of the contact details object might be mobile number. That's five, 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 five. So there we've got an object inside of the property inside of an object. So next property or data type we're going to look at is an array. And an array is specified by square brackets instead of curly brackets. So let's say we want to specify hobbies for Mr. Jones. So we would go in and now specify an open and close square bracket. And in this case, we're just going to have text strings as, or we're just going to have a text array or a string array. But you could have an array with all of the data types that we've covered so far. You could have a number array. You could have an array of objects even. Um, so, but for now, we're just going to have a normal uh, text array. So let's say hobbies is, first of all, cycling. Add a comma for another value and running and might also be interested in music. All right, so these uh, cycling, running, music, these are the ho hobbies for Mike Jones, all in a array, as is specified by those square brackets and not curly brackets. Curly brackets are for objects, which is what we're gonna be doing now is to create an array of objects. So to do that, we're gonna have a comma behind the value of the previous property and now we're going to specify Mike's children. All right, so we're going to have another array and specify open and close square brackets. But let's just go and copy some of the properties from the parent's object. And we can now go and put it in the child object as well. So let's create the first object and paste those properties inside of it so I can just move all of those up one bit so we can see who, which uh, object they belong to so that's not Mike Jones let's call that uh, Tom okay Tom Jones yeah, it's okay fine um, but now Tom needs to be younger you know so let's say Tom is 10 and he's not married either and uh, driver's license ID let's say he does have a driver's license and that ID is uh, ID, whatever the case may be. Just need to remove that comma because um, we, we don't have a, a property behind or after this one. So the comma would actually create an error as you can see over there. All right, so let's go and copy this object. And now we're gonna have a comma to specify that we're now passing the next object in the array. And uh, in this case, this is going to be Mary and she is eight and she doesn't have a driver's license yet. So that's null. I wonder how Tom did it at 10 that he's got a driver's license. But that's a, all right, That's a different discussion. But essentially, these are all of the data types that you could be working with. And um, that is properly formed JSON. Just one little hint in Visual Studio Code. If you hit F1, there's an add-in that you can install called Beautify, and that'll just, if you hit that, it'll remove all of the unnecessary spaces, and it'll fix all of the indents and all of these things for you. So that is, that is proper JSON. One thing to note, though, is this object currently sits completely on its own. 
And in the context of a person list or a person collection, typically this would have been in an array as well. So that would have been inside of square brackets like that, which would afford you and allow you the opportunity to specify a comma at the end of that object and then create another one below that or behind it. So I'm going to leave it like it is now uh, because we're going to use this exact same object in the next video to actually bring all of this into the Power Platform to show you how Power Apps deals with, uh, with this data structure. So please join us for that video. Um, if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe and uh, see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.